In the early 1950s, Locals in Bladenboro, North Carolina reported a strange creature emerging from the woods and killing multiple livestock and dogs, leaving their mutilated bodies behind. This happened several different times within a course of a month. But the strangest thing was that the creature seemed mostly interested in drinking blood. Thus was born the Beast of Bladenboro legend that still thrives in the area. The story behind the vampire beast terrorizing Bladenboro is a long and strange one. Between footprints, animal corpses, and eyewitness sightings, it's clear that there is some sort of mysterious beast in the area, and no one is really sure what it is. Mysterious animal deaths still crop up in the area from time to time, leading some to believe the beast may still be on the loose. The first sighting of the beast happened back in 1953. On the evening of December 29th, a woman heard her neighbor's dogs causing a fuss outside at night. They were barking and whimpering as if in fear. And she went out to check to see what the matter was. To her surprise, she reportedly found a large cat-like creature that she thought was a mix between a lion and a bear. It slunk away into the darkness before she could get a decent look at it, however, leaving her reasonably shaken from the experience. But that wasn't all. In some accounts of the incident, the dogs did more than just bark. The creature came prowling back and ended up killing both dogs in a horrifying manner. Later on, there would be more sightings and more killings. But it was on that day that the beast of Bladenboro was born. There was one chilling factor that set the beast apart from an average bear or wild dog. It seemed fixated on blood. When dogs and livestock began turning up dead, local authorities found that the animals had been drained of blood with only a few drops left in the corpses. While some of the victimized animals were horrifyingly mutilated, some bodies were found simply with bites and broken bones and were flattened. One witness even recalls that it seemed the strange animal was drinking blood from one of the dogs it had killed. Newspapers as you might guess, latched on to the notion that there was a blood sucker about and began describing the beast as vampiric. This also gave rise to the notion that the beast might be something supernatural or mutated, as few animals in the world particularly feed off of solely blood. While this mystified and sensationalized the beast, it also frightened people, and they soon decided the beast had to be caught. While the beast took down livestock, including goats, pigs, and perhaps even horses, its preferred prey tended to be dogs leading to further speculation that the vampire might be more cat-like than wolf-like, as cats are notorious enemies 
of dogs. After the first sighting in December, the beast reemerged and went on a rampage. On New Year's Eve, 1953, Woody Storm found two of his dogs gruesomely killed on his property. Both had obviously been brought down by something large, as they were not exactly small dogs and had been drained of blood. Over the next few days, reports came in from across the county, all reporting that dogs had been killed by some massive cat or bear or monster. The animals sometimes tore the dogs apart, drained their blood, or just dragged them off into the woods. A few of the poor animals were not found until later, dead and mutilated in the woods. But why did the beast particularly target dogs? Nothing's ever been proven. The other telltale sign that the beast had been at work was that the bodies of its victims found were terribly mutilated. And not just a slashed stomach either. The beast had decapitated its victims or, at the very least, smashed their skulls to the point of flattening them. Many of the bodies later found in the woods were completely missing their heads, and one rabbit was found completely decapitated, but still warm, as if the creature had snapped off his head in one bite before fleeing. Dogs were often found with their lower jaws torn completely off or smashed back to the point of being unrecognizable. This indicated that the creature was strong, and it cast serious doubt on later suggestions that the animal was merely a bobcat or a stray hound. Another thing many witnesses reported is that the beast of Bladenboro made an absolutely chilling sound. While many accounts differ in the size and color of the beast, most agree that its call sounded partly human in an unearthly way and truly unnerving. Some described it as the sound of a baby crying in pain somewhere outside. Others said it was like a woman screaming as if she had been stabbed or had been hurt. Some people even reported seeing the animal open its jaws to make the sound. So it was not the noise of one of its unfortunate canine victims dying. No matter how it was described, pretty much everyone agreed that the beast's call was positively blood curdling. While the beast definitely seemed to prefer canine prey, it did once try to attack a human. On the evening of January 5th, 1954, Mrs. C.E. Kinslaw was in her home when she heard some strange sounds outside. The dog sounded like they were whimpering, and she went outside to see what the matter was. There, she saw a massive cat-like creature approaching her dogs, and it quickly turned its eyes on her. The beast rushed at her as if to attack her, and she screamed before running inside for help from her husband. Apparently frightened by her screams, the beast slunk back into the woods. 
The beast never attacked another human, seeming to prefer dogs and livestock. However, the incident made the papers, especially noting that there had been tracks left outside. It proved the beast was real and that it could be dangerous to people. After the mysterious and gruesome deaths of so many local animals, people who lived in Bladenboro decided it was time to take down the beast. In January of 1954, a massive group began to comb the forest and swamps trying to find this mysterious creature. The hunt got so big, in fact, that big game hunters came from miles away and across state lines just for a shot at tracking down the creature. Of course, given the rough terrain in the area, it was difficult to track the beast and even more difficult to catch it. And after a long while had passed, the mayor called off the hunt. As to what the beast is, nobody is sure, but there are plenty of theories. The most obvious is that the animal is some sort of mountain lion, also called a catamount or a cougar. But blood sucking doesn't exactly make sense in the case of a cougar. So some experts have speculated that perhaps the animal lapped up the blood after crunching on the bones and bodies, rather than actually sucking it out. Along those lines, a bobcat has also been suggested, even if most people agree that they are not big or strong enough to fit the beast's characteristics. Another theory says that the beast is actually a large dog that was raised by a local before escaping that was supposedly truly massive. Some others have even said that it is simply a bear that people mistook for being cat-like in the dog. That being said, with respect to the sighting's whereabouts, the beast was spotted on the outskirts of the town Bladenboro, North Carolina, which is located nearly an hour from any other cities and boasts a population of less than 2,000. In fact, one of the town's only real claims to fame is its legendary beast. And this is what put it on the map. News sources all along the coast and in many other states reported on the strange killings. And nearly overnight, Bladenboro became a recognizable name. When you think about it, though, North Carolina is a great habitat for cryptids. Bladenboro, in particular, is surrounded by both forests and swamps, which makes combing the area for signs of an unknown creature rather difficult. This proved especially true when locals tried to hunt down the beast after attacks became more frequent. Although the creature appeared on the scene and wreaked its worst havoc in the 1950s, the beast still surfaces from time to time. In 2003, more farm animals and dogs began to turn up with crushed bones, bite marks, and very little blood in their bodies. Strange tracks were also found near the bodies, leading to people believing that the beast was back at work. But it didn't just stop with dead livestock and pets. In 2013, a local family reported that their dog and three of their horses had been slaughtered in the night. The dogs had been barking, and when the son of the family, 
Tyler investigated, he said he had seen a strange creature in the shadows running away from the body of a dead dog. The dead animals had been drained of blood and given that the attack again happened in Bladenboro, people quickly linked the attack to the beast. Even though the beast has killed numerous family pets and livestock, the locals actually celebrate the creature rather than fear it now that its activity has somewhat subsided, holding an annual beast fest. Some older folks, however, are reluctant to talk about it, indicating as one local puts it, there is such a thing as too much publicity for a small town. <laughs>